<coughs> Hello, everyone. The title of today's episode. The title of today's episode is Probabilities of the Mind. And Mr. Within is in a very unique spot right now. You know, I, I'm in this room maybe like once in a lifetime and then this possibility of a moment goes away. So let's begin here, first of all, in seeing how perception works. And perception works in a way where immediately what is what you're considering reality is what is tangibly being seen but very few pay attention to the idea of tangibility so if you were to ask why you're here and who you are you will go into a space of observance where you're looking at, uh, at the definitions of existence and what many people don't realize is that language has has a huge structural influence here in how we are looking at reality so let's say we see this cup here right now right um, some people let's say if we put the cup like this let's say some people look at reality and just see a cup some people look at reality and see just a cup here you know some people go work with reality and engage and touch it and just look at what the mind is more than just information that can be written on a page. Rather, they imagine studying uh, your own information, how you as a being, as a phenomena of life, are in form. So we can see that when we engage it suddenly, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> we see suddenly there's an owl. Do you know, we see suddenly there's something that the coffee cup's intelligence, the being that was just looking at reality and saying it's a coffee cup, cannot comprehend. It's, it's the novelty, right? And it's like that moment where you actually see one owl is two owls. There are actually two owls on this chair. Reality is more than what we are considering it at first. What that means is it requires an exploration. Now, people who get to certain questions where they, there's no longer a logical answer for, they're constantly going to other people who have really linearized the process to see what it means. You know, It's as if I can say this is a cup of coffee, or I can tell you, oh, this is a cup, and this is the coffee in it, and this is what it is, and just go very in detail to the definition of the concept which is having a relativity to the being who is wondering of the experience in the moment. So let's say we are wondering, what is this? And then we see there's a view that could see all of it separate, or it can see all of it together. You know, there's, there's a way of even looking at your own body of intelligence and not seeing separate organs, but seeing a holistic... Uh, steaming cup of coffee, I don't know. <laughs> <It's> like... <clears throat> Anyways. <clears throat> the probabilities of the mind is that moment where you are wondering how do I handle reality when there's imagination, where, there, where there's dream states, altered states of consciousness, you know, um, even psychedelic experiences, as some have said, you know, yogic experiences. It, it's, it's one of those things where the wonder brings you into the clearest observance. So when you sincerely seek the simplicity of the moment, you are left with all that is. So just think about it, guys. What, what, what is the greatest comprehension that a being can have sitting, let's say, um, by a tree and meditating? You know? And we see that the, the external aspect of it is that 
what happens is all the speculations on what reality is shift because the duality is being observed at once. The mind is at first an idea that is suggesting how everything is happening. But when we look at the world and when we look at ourselves, a certain perception communicates that <clears throat> a certain perception communicates that the world is continuing and we are visiting it, you know. And another perception communicates that the world is within you. So what that means is that drop in the ocean, is it, is it really a drop or is consciousness an all-pervading, permeating uh, sense of existence that can even question a non-existence? You know, sometimes the, the divinity of the moment is how the moment is. So for example, I'm wondering why am I here? Why do I look like this? You know, that, that same wonder of what my face looks like where you're like, I don't know, let's say you see your face consciously for the first time ever. <laughs> You know, so when you see your face, you see what, oh my God, how unique is my DNA and where I've been positioned in life. But suddenly you see the moment you're existing in. Right now, this coffee cup is on the table. Right now, there are two owls here on this chair. And evidently there's a window to heaven. So, <laughs> so there, is, there, there, is a, there is a clarity that cannot judge itself. And this is where the technical search has to trust the devotion of all the complexity it has endured going through. Do you know? So it's like that moment where that, that um, let's say, it's like that moment where that, uh, how would I communicate it? Like that, it? It's like that moment where that soldier is trying to cross the border or trying to get to the check zone. And when he gets to the check zone, the helicopter's there, but he's been for weeks just soloing it out and going going into the most, I don't know, hardest obstacles that life could throw at the person. You'd see it's, it's like when that chopper comes, that guy's mind has been adjusted to a different intensity of the reception of reality. So when we are all moments of existence, moments of creation, wondering what this is, that where we are, Really, our greatest comprehension comes to what is here and now. And then this, in the here and now, it's like the rawness of the form, the attention on the form creates the transcendental possibility. So like, just like how man can write a, write a sentence a couple times on the same page, you know, it's like that's, that's as profound as all these infinite... Uh, conceptions of parallel realities that people project that they think multidimensionality is. But multidimensionality is an experience that is not bothered by the temperature, but rather where the attention goes by the change. So, <clears throat> when we look into the eyes of a wooden owl, which is in my hand right there. You simply see not an owl looking you, looking back at you, but you see your mind suggesting where it is through the immediate imagery. Life is beyond the ignorance of creation's questions. So what that means is we are either the mind of God <laughs> or we transcend the need for linear self-assurance of form. Rather, our direct experience becomes the, the profoundness of the phenomenon. And what that really means is like, uh, imagine we are living in a world where uh, every being is traveling through fantastic moments of creation. Do you know? What that means is imagine we get to a point as a civilization where every human being that is alive, let's say, uh, suddenly has an ability to have access to each other's memories and we've also, let's say, tapped into the memory of the planet. And so we are just this sphere of 
moments of knowing that have come to be one grander moment beyond individual conception. So the creation of the moment has a novelty factor which is change. So you see how we say there is a cup on this chair? I said this earlier. So the sensi existential sensitivity could go to a point where it's not about whether the cup is on the chair or the chair is under the cup. <laughs> but it's rather about how there will always be that next moment where a person can get up and go. You can move out of that focus point of reality and also I don't to come back <laughs> and see that there can be a shift. So it's like many people in reality are just seeing the cup. And it's like this actually, Bilsa. Consciousness is this owl. The mind is this owl. And the body is this cup. The mind looks at the cup, <laughs> looks at the body, and wonders where the body came from. So this owl is wondering where it came from. And Mr. Within wants to just say, let us say consciousness is looking through all of this. And this mind is also looking through, but this mind cannot be aware of what's behind it, cannot see it. So mind cannot see soul. Have you noticed that? That's why so many people are lost thinking about it. Because the finding is not in a question that can infinitize into a reality with infinite possibilities, you know? Like, so what does this mean? If some, let's say every time we discover something scientifically, we put a variable for it. What does that do other than just uh, add more variables? You know, it, it's one of those things like, uh, <laughs> Where, how would I say? Okay, let's, let's continue with this and I'll, pretty much I wanted to bring forth the metaphor of a tree and how it can, it, it shows you how causality happens. Trees are the best history books. <laughs> Trees are actually what, where history books come from. So we should be actually asking trees, not on the <laughs> But what that means is just observing what a tree is, and then your mind will do the poetry. Anyways, so consciousness through a mind is looking at a body, but we are not there. We, we don't know we are consciousness or not, so we are here. We are this owl. And so this owl, the mind, is constantly looking at the cup and it's wondering where it's originating from and we see where it is, it's, it's saying it's originating from me. It's definitely originating from me. I'm seeing the cup. I'm, I'm, I am looking at the cup. I am looking at the cup. You see a sense of identity. Then, uh, this is where now, when, this, when the mind asks itself where it came from, so once it knows, once you have contemplated deeply that all physical reality is an origination within the mind, then from the mind, you, <clears throat> observe the emptiness of form and how any form you perceive is originating from these eyes, these, these, the mind's eyes, let, let us say which is conscious, uh, it becomes consciousness in the purest form. Now, anyways, <laughs> so the mind is looking at the cup. Now, when the mind asks itself, when this owl is like, all right, where am I looking from? What is looking at me? What is seeing me? Then it gets to a proximity where only from one belief or one view, it begins to see more. And it's like, it's creativity. Every being's creative outburst and expression in this reality is like the mind more wondering about the origin of creation in its dy and dy dynamism, let's say. And so suddenly, there comes a moment where, have you noticed all these yogis renouncing physicality, all these, um, th like meditation, not having the focus on physicality being So look at what happens. When the mind really truly comprehends that physicality is originating within it will go this is when it goes within where it's as if physicality is no longer the question non-existence non is more 
in interest, it becomes of a question for you, then why existence? So you wonder why non-existence. But you are, don't forget, the owl is still here. So th this still exists. The cup doesn't have to be. The cup is non-existence at that point when you enter internally to some degree. Like an example would be like some uh, yogis and samadhi, you know. So when there's that one-pointedness of seeing there, th this one point is originating from within, then when one goes within, this is where the mind no longer needs externality to justify it, but it is completely empowered by the origin of the attention. So your attention becomes your energy source, you know? <laughs> and yes, I am Iron Man. No, <laughs> no. anyways, the country. <laughs> I don't know why there's an Iron Man here. Why isn't there a Golden Man here? <laughs> well, I don't know, some... Transparent man, you know, better than the invisible man. <laughs> Anyways, when consciousness and mind, when mind asks itself, when you just are, you know, being that philosopher and just wondering, looking out the window and wondering, why is mind here? You see. The attention of here, you suddenly, you will suddenly recognize that this is not the sacrifice part, not like the crucifixion part, but just this is the p part where there is, how would I say, the mind realizes it never was a mind. You know, it's like it's like the unenlightened realize they were always in the light, and so it's it's that moment where this also ceases to exist. The mind sim simply becomes so transparent, it's empty that. Consciousness remains. Now, what that means is you suddenly see uh, the physical, the mind, looking at, you'll see all of these being handled by the single drop of awareness that uh, consciousness is the, is the seer of all, that is, in the moment. So this is, this is very profound, because we will no longer term it consciousness. We will just recognize the moment has this unspeakable divinity that is... Uh, beaming out of our eyes into manifestation, <laughs> you know. So the probabilities of the mind is very important because I, I see, you know, many of these, especially in the World Science Festival, there, uh, uh, there was this very profound YouTube video on consciousness where they were observing John Malkovich's movie, if I, if I, if I remember correctly. And, you know, pretty, that, it, like, you got to go see the movie for yourself, but... Pretty much, when we look at mind, if it's only examining this, how will it know this? And if it is not examining itself, it will think it is the cup. Now, society really thinks it is contained. We look at this world and we're like, oh, look at this system, look at this, look at this, you know, mountain here in front of me, you know, uh, you know. <laughs> And so you, you, your mind has to recognize that the existential experiential responsibility is not that this needs to pray in a certain way or this needs to read the, the textbook, you know, textbooks in a certain way and get a certain certificate, you know. It's, it's, it's like this, as long as you're here, you still need a reward system for your vitality of enthusiastic, I don't know, life ex exploration. <laughs> Guys, this is very important, this relationship, because this is the personal, this is the, this is the personal going into the impersonal. So when this turns around, it's impersonal, it's unspeakable, you are, uh, you are what you are. <laughs> and, but here, this is where we have many things that are developing. So you see, it's like the intention of consciousness was an expansion uh, into the self of selves. 
where one aspect of our experience of this reality is going towards an infinite, infinite probability where we are saying, okay, so if this is a mind, why can't my mind be like this? Why can't my mind be like this? Why can't the definition of mind be like this? You know, we have around, you know, 8 billion and growing definitions of the mind. So we can have more, like imagine each one of those people having, like, I don't know, uh, 10 trillion, let's say, or even more, like, probabilities of envisioning the mind in their absolute core of the depth of their minds capacity. So it's like, it's not about just being in an infinite playground and not wondering why you're there. Uh, it's about looking at reality and seeing uh, the terminology of it being physical or non-physical, of this being true, of that being true, does not serve you. What truly serves the being is, is there clarity of the essence of what is, you know? <laughs> so one, one thing Mr. Within would like to really see in every, every, you know, <laughs> hopefully it would be termed like this too. But they have a course called the study of isness, where the, the being studies reality and also looks at how many ways we're looking at it, because that is the most interesting game in town to know who we are, to know what we are, and in that revelation realize that a changing world needs no face. Regardless of if you're seeing two owls in one view. <laughs> Do you see? It's, it's, there, there's a beautiful geometry to the explorer's mind because uh, an aspect of his mind is wandering, so the past engines are just maxed out, and then the, the the probability of the future is just how the change is revealing things. You know, so if you're walking in the park, it's the next part of the park you're walking into. So it's very important to see that consciousness is not defined, but has a definition. So this is where Mr. Within has brought forth, uh, and by the way, this same relationship, it can be simultaneously seen in language. So if you look at language as if words and letters were alive, you totally see a multidimensionality, uh, and it's like in a fractal manner, it's showing where man's, you know, multidimensional experience is headed. Now, <laughs> uh, multidimensionality is, 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 um, it's nothing, as in it is no thing. So you are getting a comprehension of reality beyond thingness, beyond things, which to some degree just come to how attend, how light and sound are just the phenomena of the moment. But the probabilities of the mind dissolve, and you simply kind of become present. Language is selling stories. Language is creating imagery in the minds of people and uh, at the same time it is freeing man but it's a technology that if it is misused it, it will create unnecessary things. So let us just consider how in this spinning ball of rock in space there was an ape who stood up. Now, this ape that stood up began communicating. And its communication led to an expansion in a dimension of experience where it's like we gained the ability to say, oh, look at that object. Oh, look, that's me in the mirror. You know. So really, the attention is the moment, the moment is an unspeakable now. The only probability of the mind is to exist. That is the last duality. 
And when you wonder about existence, you realize that the vastness of the exploration of the limited concept. So what that means is, the minute you say, I am this, you suddenly see there's so many other things you're not. You know, the minute I say, I am just this coffee, the minute this, you know, the mind says, I'm just this coffee cup, the, the owls are non-existent. It has not allowed itself to see beyond the coffee cup. And what that means is, um, this is where life's reflection and your study and self-inquiry of the nature of your moment of existence really opens for you the greater dimensions of experience. But it's not something you're seeking, so be mindful of language. More than people are ter ter terrorizing people, language is terrorizing. And it means that the system, the physical system, needs to be inquired to the point where there is an awareness to the, a non-physical system. What, that, what does that mean? The system is coming from consciousness. The system is not coming from the mind. So the systems that come from the mind, very temporal. But you see, for example, uh, let us say Rumi poems, uh, Hafez poems, Khalil Gibran, Rabindranath Tagore poems, you know, all these, or many other great poets, you know, William Blake, Henry David Thoreau, you know, all these poets, what remained was the, the, the systematic expression uh, of, okay, how do I say it? <laughs> Unspeakable, speakable, when this is speaking about this, mind the, mind, mind the language. <laughs> Sal wants to drink my coffee. <laughs> Let us say for now in quotations, the system of the soul, the, the soul is the intention of all creation. The mind is the lens for that light to project into reality. The projection is objectivity. The projection is wondering is mind. Mind is not cup. Mind looks at cup, thinks it's mind. Mind without cup looks at itself, cannot be cup. The emptiness again. <clears throat> The inspiration or every reality experience all the probabilities of the mind in this moment will become heaven on earth. Cow <laughs> You know, Michelangelo has this quote where he says something like, he saw the angel in, the, in like the stone and he just set the angel free. Something like that. Mr. Within sees that every moment 
can have a deeper self-inquiry because change is a natural flow. The systems of reality that we have today are actually like vitamin C's we've poured in the water for our consciousness. That means the linearization dissolves into the nonlinear. And so there never was a linear nonlinear, but to some degree, there is an absolute mixture of awareness of all that is. It's as if one dimension pouring into the next. And then there is a multidimensionality of just how the, how would I say it? Change, the change is divine. The change is the divine thing to me. In other words, This will blow your mind, I'm telling you, because there never was a need for a mind or for objective. I think it's at this point where certain beings develop an ability to not just be an object with a subject, a subject that is objectified, but to be absolute momentary possibility of all things. So the soul drives the mind in how the mind created a world. You know, Rumi has this quote where he says, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and out beyond ideas of right doing, there is a place. I will meet you there. And society and all that the mind can perceive needs to integrate, or if it doesn't, the drop alone will evaporate if it has not merged into a stream and just or a river and it's just heading for the ocean of absolute uh, being. You know, what, what, what else does a, does a being, where else can a being go? You know what I mean? It's like, for the human being, all human doings will seem void because it is out of our own creation. So it's like, uh, if, I put this, if I put this cup here, let us say, and let's say I suddenly forgot that I put this cup here. And I just suddenly looked at it and I'm like, who put this cup here? Oh my God, who put this cup here? You know, oh my God, let me just do some scientific experiments on who put this cup here. Oh my God, this cup must have come from, you know, from uh, that, that story or from that theory or from that lineage or something. But you see, no, it's we put the cup in it. We put the, <laughs> like the, the being puts the reality in reality. <laughs> And so this attention will liberate you because you, you will kind of just relax a bit and let life happen. You won't try to control it's happening because it's too much. I mean, if you think about it, we are a part of this world that is just this natural phenomena and it has self-awareness. Now, if this self-awareness wanted to control itself, it would be as if like this idea, this idea is trying to control physicality. And as it controls physicality, <laughs> it's the same thing. Nature is separate only to know that it cannot be. Whether we believe, we are letting ideology take the steering wheel and we say we believe in this and we believe in that. Oh, I believe in this. Oh, I believe in that. You know. There is a blessing and just very great privilege in being fully, not who you are, that is socially and culturally relevant, but all that you are. That means if I told you to just sit for a moment 
and to just be, just be you. You'd see The rawness of life is everywhere. We are never not experiencing. We are always the experiencer. This never changes, never changes. This is what truly knows that you've had many different birthdays, you know, and how in your next birthday, let's say, your mind has an ability to remember all your other birthdays where you blew a candle and all the birthdays you can visualize which you're going to go through. Do you see? When, when time, when we can imagine time, different spaces of time, what that immediately signifies is that the time, the understanding of time we have is not real. That means we wear the watch. And uh, it's very interesting because if we are looking at a watch, it's as if we are never wandering beyond time. If you are always late for your next errand, you never have time to study time, to wander beyond time and space, to wonder uh, what is the greatest scientific discovery of reality and at the same time what is the most ancient yogic revelation of reality and then to see okay now how do these both fit in the design of my eyes at the moment and just lead humanity to just uh, to the kindness of mankind When you have time in the palm of your hand, <laughs> you see that what happens is that, you know how they say an angry man, an angry person can never be, uh, you can never be angry and reasonable at the same time, but that's an old idiom, you know. An angry man forgets time when he clenches his fist. And in doing so, to some degree, only becomes an unconscious shift of space. Every moment is serving its purpose. It's an integrative oneness, which is beyond the ideology that needs language and shape and form. It's like that moment where before you buy a ruler, you're wondering who's measuring. And that question uh, uh, is like wondering how far light has touched the depth of the ocean of your mind. I hope in this talk you have simply viewed a performance of communication that is trying to show that the probabilities of the mind are actually how the moment is and so really the greatest understanding and comprehension one can get is that what is full is not there you know it is an emptiness of body and mind to be and then the moment is the consciousness. This is the all permeating, all that is, you know, uh, sense of being. <laughs> and of course, these are Mr. Within's views in this moment. Uh, you must reveal 
the greatness of all that you are within the moment. And when I say you must, at first there's an idea of you, but in an instant you can also see the universe is you also. So fundamentally, our identifications can go infinite, just like how, based on the empty page, we can keep writing the same sentence over and over. Beyond the probabilities of the mind, presence beyond personality is the gift of the moment. And may it very playfully and clearly be open. Much blessings and Namaste. <laughs>